Grace and peace, family. Grace and peace. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. My hotel. Namaste. Free the land, beloved. Come on in. Come on in. Come on in. I hope you can hear and see me okay. My name is Vicki Dillard. I'm a media personality and spiritual teacher. I know some of you are used to seeing me uh, on different platforms. Please let everybody know that they can see me here on my own channel live um, at least once or twice a week here at VickiDillard.tv on YouTube. You can um, access us directly also at VickiDillard.tv. Of course, you'll still be able to see some of my content on other networks and platforms. Uh, be sure to join my email list on my website to find out those details uh, at VickiPlanet.com. The link is in the chat. Family. I hope you are well. Come on in, family. Give us a big thumbs up as you come in on the count of three. If you haven't on the count of three, please hit that thumbs up button. Thumbs up, thumbs up and share, share, share on the count of three. Are you ready? One, two, three. Thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. Share, 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 share. Thank you so very much, dear family. Thank you so very much. Family, I won't be long, but I will be strong. Let me turn these around. All right. I hope you can hear and see me okay. Dear family, now I want you all to just listen very briefly to this little bit of news. I just wanted to update you. Briefly, of course, I heard about this the other day, but I'm just now uh, getting a chance um, to cover it. And um, I want to say this. You all know um, that I have been doing alternative independent media for some time now. And I have always been active uh, socially and politically long before I ever came online. Nobody had to, tr to train me. I wasn't I didn't need to get inspired by anybody uh, who might have been doing it. Um, uh, before me uh, online in this particular space. And of course, I've had my detractors over the years and I've had people that wanted to make sure that Vicky is not considered to be new black media and folks trying to tell me other folks who's this and that and all that. Uh, and I really try to shun these little terms, even amongst those of us that are in the black grassroots, because I understand because of the comments that I've gotten and how I've been treated over the years, you know, the, the support isn't the same. Uh, and certainly the disrespect isn't the same. Talk black to me, somebody. Uh, what I know for sure is that nobody was doing it like me. I do it my own way, just like other folks do it their own way. I understand that my vantage point, uh, my style, the mood and energy that I brought to a particular thing uh, was much, much different. Now, I know it's easy to dismiss that. And it's OK, because I know I'm not for everybody. Talk black to me, somebody. And that's OK. But my effectiveness can be proven in no limit of time. And it's cool. Uh, and it's the reason why I have particular adversaries and detractors to what it is that I do because of its power and potency. So it's not just about a number on this particular platform or this particular broadcast or this particular followers, uh, follow, followers uh, on a particular platform or subscribers. Uh, my combined impact um, is absolutely undeniable. And I spend very little time trying to convince somebody of that. But over time, uh, the fruit is produced and it's undeniable. Talk black to me, somebody. And so, so much so that your sister with the curly braids, um, after only being um, on a few platforms for a short period of time, immediately caught the attention uh, of some high profile and some of y'all may call some of these folks powerful, whatever. Um, but um, I immediately got on their radar and I immediately became um, a target for some of them. And there have been some large platforms that if I said the name, you would easily know it. That contacted me, for example, to do a show, a broadcast, a producer did everything. They were supposed to do their checks and so forth, only for Vicky to um, have been dismissed and other Alternative black media folks ended up doing it and they use those individuals instead to replace me. Um, I have heard from folks from mainstream media and my impact and my private 
supporters that if I said certain names, you would absolutely know who they are, but I don't disclose that information. So the impact is for the up and out and the down and out and everybody in between. Talk back to me, somebody. I bring this up because I do this for the right reason. You understand? And it's important to understand our power and to understand that we are in extraordinary times. And the fact that when I say, not only are we controlling the narrative, but we are controlling world events, I literally mean that. You have to understand our importance so that you can properly support it. Financially, with your viewership, with you sharing, with you supporting, and most importantly, with you taking the information that you hear and seeing how you can practically implement it in your life. Talk black to me, somebody. The question should not be to someone like me. So what's the answer? I always use this analogy, just like when you're watching the weather, when the weather person is giving you the uh, forecast, you don't call down to the station and say, well, what should I do about the forecast? If it's going to rain today, you said it was supposed to rain today. Should I take an umbrella? Do you think I should take my babies to school early? Should I leave about 15, 20 minutes early so for traffic can stop? What if I should? Those are, that's outrageous. You're receiving and getting the information that's important for you to figure out how you ought to move. Talk black to me, somebody. This is a war that we're in and you are supposed to be a part of the solution. I don't want to hear no grown-ups. What's the answer? What the hell do you mean, what's the answer? You tell me what's the answer. I'm doing a hell of a lot, things that you can see and things that you can't see. All warriors, all hands on deck. You ain't getting off on this. Because you don't have the Vicky show. What's wrong with you? I'm giving you the weather report. Everybody is subject to the atmosphere. Let me hit the gavel on that. And you move accordingly. You assess your situation and determine how can I implement this information? What can I do about it? Shout out to our moderator, Aquarius79 in the chat. That's what this is for. Not just me reminding you and telling you, that's what you ought to be listening to. What can I do about this? What practical things can I implement? What's the solution? What you mean, grown up? Get the Wizard of Oz up in here. If I only had a brain. You're trying to put it off on somebody else so that you don't have to do the work. That dog don't hunt with Vicki Dillard. You're equally responsible. Talk black to me, somebody. And then half the time, I, I just started getting my little super chats and stuff back. Some of you don't even give a $5 super chat or cash app or PayPal to want to act like you breakthrough or something. Stop. Cut it out. You make a stranger's video go viral. That's fine because we like to enjoy all kinds of things, but you're not intentional about making sure that you're posting, retweeting, and sharing the stuff that you hear here. Are you cooking dinner and inviting folks over and then just put on the Vicky show? Are you letting your young people listen and watch? Do your children go to HBC schools, HBCU schools, or other schools, and you say, listen to this lady and share this with some of your roommates? Classmates, are you suggesting to the staff at their particular colleges and university to bring us in? Are you in a fraternity or a sorority? The hell, why haven't you contacted us? Set up provisions to bring us in with a decent honorarium to hear our voice to spread our message. There are practical things that you can do That's how we increase our voice. Taking it upon yourself. Hell, I got to come up with the magic, the meditation of this, the strategy, the marketing. The, uh, no, hell no. You are part of this army. 
It's on us. You play your role. Don't try to do my part. Talk black to me, somebody. I'm bringing this up because the times are too serious for you to be sitting up here playing and not understanding that we're in extraordinary times and what you ought to be doing about it. Talk black to me. Now, like I said, I saw this story some days ago. I decided to go ahead and discussed it talking about black media talking about the importance of media and how we increase our impact and our voice thus uh, uh, pushing forward our agenda and our demands Derek your gift is blessed a thousand fold beloved watch this the griot which purports to be a black media publication, blocked me a long time ago. Y'all, I don't troll knuckleheads. So if I call somebody out about something, whatever, you got a whole publication that's supposed to exist to be a voice for black people, but an independent alternative media prominent voice, you silence. See, when I'm talking about these individuals that, that block me and these kind of look that don't matter to me individually it's about they're blocking you they don't want our impact to spread so this is a way of curtailing that thinking that if you block me silly but y'all's juice itself over there at the griot these are the same people which of course is run by what's his name Byron Allen. These are the same people like Byron Allen did that will sue a big company claiming their voices are not being heard as a black business owner. But you're the very ones that's blocking other black voices. That's how you know they are fraud when they're talking about doing something for black people. But the griot with their juicy self Hires a new black media director. This is the media director, Jasmine Harris. I'm trying to turn it so you can see her picture. This is Joe Biden and Kamala and them hired a, a black media, specifically. Black media director, there she goes. Now listen to a little bit of what this piece says. Thank you all for coming on in and giving us a big thumbs up and sharing. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, 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 family. And by the way, family, I'm still this week taking orders. Um, we've been getting quite a few orders for my second, uh, the Venus, my Venus uh, Spring Luxury Magazine. Brothers, you can also purchase this for the lovely lady in your life, uh, your wife, your girlfriend, your fiance, your sister, your auntie, your mama. This is the cover. I'm so excited about our topic. We're going to be talking about being more intentional and manifesting love and money. We're going to be moving real different. We decided in 2024 and we're going to manifest the feminine way. We're going to be talking about the art of glamour, uh, new affirmations about I am the bank. It's going to be so, so yummy. I'm so excited. You're going to see some pictures in there that you haven't seen before, ladies. It's going to be absolutely yummy. Your gift is blessed. Your super chat, the e-base is blessed a thousand fold. So family, be sure to get yours. The link is in the chat for those of you that are interested. Okay. Um, women and men are meant to manifest differently. So that's what this uh, luxury magazine is about. I redefine luxury because I don't believe luxury is something that just millionaires and billionaires should enjoy. It is um, about ease and pleasure and abundance. And I feel like that we should all be entitled to that. So we talk about uh, things that have to do with us practically manifesting. Yes. Let me get to this article. It says, again, this is Jasmine Harris. She is the new black media director that Kamala and Jim Crow 
Joe Biden just hired. It says that um, they're touting a new addition to um, as evidence of the 2024 re-election operations, early commitment and investment to reach black voters. Child, please. The campaign selected Jasmine Harris, a former staffer of Senator Chuck Schumer, a Democrat from New York, to lead its black media operations. Eric, your gift is blessed a thousandfold. The move comes after the re-election campaign of President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris invested millions in early ad buys targeting black communities last year, 13 months ahead of Election Day on November 5th. Now, family, of course, they did this because they've been getting a lot of complaints about the fact that these um, political campaigns historically do not really invest and support um, black media, right? They don't put money behind black voters. They just expect you to show up. They put a lot of money into other people groups. And so that's the issue that they've had for a long time. It says here, our campaign is going to win in 2024 by mobilizing the diverse Biden-Harris coalition that sent Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House in 2020. So did you all hear that? This Democrat staffer is already bragging about the fact that they're going to win. Now, this isn't Jasmine talking on this in this quote. In this particular quote, the campaign manager, the deputy principal, deputy campaign manager is the one speaking here, Quentin Fultz. I'm going to get back to Jasmine in a minute. He says, our campaign is going to win in 2024 by mobilizing the diverse Biden coalition that sent Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House. While President Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, uh, Vice President Harris have been fighting for black Americans every day in office. Somebody say that's a lie. Somebody say that's a lie. With a straight face, he says, y'all, did y'all hear that? While President Biden and Vice President Harris have been fighting for black Americans every day in office. How many of y'all know the real devil is a lie? Everybody be sure to hit that thumbs up button now. Everybody hit that thumbs up button right now. Share, share, share. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. Y'all give me one second. I'm going to let my Instagram family know that they can join me here. Hey, Instagram. I don't see anybody coming in just yet, but Instagram, this is Vicki Dillard. I am live on my own personal channel. Yes, I know you used to see me on other platforms, but I'm live on mine at Vicki Dillard TV on YouTube, or you can reach us directly at VickiDillard.tv. I want to welcome you to join us now. I'm discussing the fact that Kamala Scamla Harris and Jim Crow Joe Biden in them campaign has hired a new black media director. Did y'all hear what I said? I love you back, Samantha. Larry said, we're here, Queen. I see you, beloved. Hey, brother. So family, I need you all to understand. Somebody said, you look good in that. Thank you, Aquarius. So family, you got to understand that they only spending these, you know, they're, they're pretending like they care about us by hiring this new black media director. And they're bragging about some of the money that they spent with black media because they've gotten in trouble over the years. The Democrats for spending uh, uh, next to nothing almost uh, on their most faithful voting block, black people. They take your vote for granted. So no, they don't pitch to you. They don't spend money with you. They don't even try to target you in any serious way in terms of media and putting money behind you to tell you the real reasons you should vote for them. They just expect you to show up. And then when you get attention, when they do get media attention, it's for when they show up with the choir robes on singing Amazing Grace or at your fish fry. Talk black to me. So let's go further with this article. 
Instagram, I want you all to come on over Instagram now to vickydillard.tv. And by the way, Instagram, be sure to get my spring luxury Venus magazine edition. I'm still doing pre-sales this week before we start to print them and ship them out in a couple of weeks. So get yours today at my website, vickyplanet.com. The link is above in my bio. Again, join me now on YouTube at vickydillard.tv or vickydillard.tv on YouTube. Somebody say, where's your hammer? I've already hit the hammer, friends. It's, it's here with me, beloved. Come on over to uh, YouTube, precious, and be sure to share. Um, SM, your gift, uh, your super chat is blessed a thousandfold. I'm not always here to catch your life. However, it always is my duty to listen. Thank you, precious. Everybody hit that thumbs up button. Share, share, share. Family, media is warfare. And media is also a spiritual entity. We're the first line of defense. And it's no wonder when you hear the word media, media is the plural for medium. And we know that one of these senses that we use the word medium has to do with the spiritual practitioner that basically serves as a bridge and a conduit, conduit between the living and the dead. Yes. We cannot overestimate or overemphasize our importance and why it's important that you tap in, that you listen to us and you also support us in every way because we speak for issues that matter to you. Yes. Now, let me read more from this article. All right, Instagram, I got to click off because I got to use this device to finish reading the article. OK, I'll see you in a minute, Instagram. Thank you, YouTube, for your patience while I quickly <laughs> let my family know to join me. Here, okay. Now, how many of you all know that our impact is so profound that they making big announcements that they hired a black media director and claim that they spending a few million dollars for advertisement, which still pales in comparison. But notice they still haven't reached out to any of us that I'm aware of. Talk black to me, somebody. You can't look at our impact and speaking uh, looking at our impact over the past few years and how we have literally changed the political landscape and the people in the streets speak to that. The demographers prove that. Your mainstream journalists prove that. I read you all, I just did a piece the other day showing how NBC said how black youth helped get Joe Biden elected in 2020, but uh, listening to uh, James Clyburn, but now they're not listening to him. Well, the question is, who are they listening to? Talk black to me, somebody. Watch this. Let me pull this back up. One second, family. I'm, I'm, I'm about to pull it back up. I had to finish posting this from um, Instagram after I invited them to come. I want you to finish listening to this article. Here we go. Okay, I think we're ready. Now, we are so powerful that we force all of them to move a certain way. All that's us. Reparations is getting the traction it's getting because of us. Don't talk to me about those one or two old school people that have been talking about reparations for decades. I don't disrespect them. But let's stop playing. They are not the ones that gave this thing momentum and traction. And what's interesting is they show like the ones reaching out to us saying that they want to work with us and they stand with us for making reparations go viral again. Talk black to me, somebody. They despise us 
They mock us. They call us Simple Simon M. Effers for making this the prominent issue. You got different states that's moving different for reparations because of us. We emphasize that because I'm trying to tell you that some of your old schoolers, no disrespect, some of them are just playing. They're not trying to upset the white supremacist apple cart by being dogmatic and unapologetic about making this happen. They'll sit there and make all kinds of compromises over everybody and everything else, including immigration, including other issues, ancillary issues like LGBTQ, Planned Parenthood stuff. They want us to get into everything else but reparations. They'll fall for those tricks. Happily, gladly. Not us. We're not just sitting here playing and being theoretical. We're not being speculative and talking about reparations in, in, a, in a head knowledge only. No, baby. We're going to make this thing experiential. Let me hit the gavel. For those of you that don't know, I don't know how you don't know. You might be new. For many years. The Vicky Show is the OG, the home of the hand clap and gavel raps. Baby, I was using the gavel for 18, 19 years and brought it to social media. This is a prophetic symbol for me, but I'm using it because I want you to know that your words matter. And your words are more important than even the judges and your lawmakers that use this tool. Thumbs up, thumbs up, family. Share, share, share. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. So now the Biden administration, the Biden-Harris administration and campaign pretending like black folks matter. So to save face, they hired this little new black media alleged director. Now, if she has not reached out to other independent black media folk who's been doing similar work to me and have even larger platforms than I, alternative black media that's using their platforms for empowerment and that speaks on social and political issues that make us the uh, priority. Ask them had they reached out to them. Our impact and influence is unmatched in terms of with the people. And then you got folks in mainstream media that watch what we do and steal our talking points or try to steal my style and things that I discuss. And then they use it for their platforms and pretend you don't exist. And then they get in the background with other folks that don't like you or have a bone to pick with you. They believe like you because they're in, your, they're in my DMs too. But they're willing to compromise a little bit more Vicky's just a little bit too radical for them. So we're going to keep ourselves distanced from you. We're going to hang out with the street politicians so we can still get some of the mainstream jobs and pretend that you really matter and make it an impact. So you give your sister Vicky Dillard the middle finger while you give the powers that shouldn't be the 5-5. Five five. King Shaw, they be watching y'all on YouTube. They know about you and Phil and Lisa and some of the others. Yeah, I'm sure. Been doing this a while. And it doesn't help when those that know that you helped to pave the way. Let me tell y'all something. There is, there can be problems on both sides from people that have been in the game a long time and those that haven't. But it's okay for you to show respect to the ones that have led the way that have impacted this game in a way that others haven't. It's okay to show respect for that. That's a spiritual thing. And when you're too arrogant and automatically act like that's a diva thing because your, your arrogance and your ego, you're going to ultimately lose out.
Talk black to me, somebody. I, I believe in honoring folk. Just go out there and act like you ain't never seen. Ninja, y'all wasn't, no, they wasn't doing what I'm doing, silly. You wasn't on these topics. Not like this. And then the moment you say it about yourself, y'all love the word narcissism. Shut up. People get on my nerves with you overly use that word. You don't know who you are, so you get mad at the person that does it. And don't miss when I back up my magic every time. Funny looking self. And we got to constantly reassure you with your low self-esteem step. I'm, you may be going through, but get out the way. We're not going to be thrown because you still got stuff to go. Just go deal with your stuff and come on back. That's not my job. Wanting a stranger to heal you. Funny looking self. Want to act like this was y'all beforehand. No, Ninja, it wasn't. You know it and I know it. Funny looking set. And then the other thing that be getting me, how you, some folk, the copycat of it, my God, the copycatting of it all. Y'all steady be trying to remake stuff because you don't want that person to get it. funny looking self and then the rest of you think you're going to take credit for something that was never yours silly I forget one of them songs Jay-Z did back in the day what was it talking about somebody want to claim they made hove if you made hove he said don't make another one make another one get out the day That ain't have nothing to do with you, silly. This was the divine involved. You play your role, silly, and then you ultimately get blessed. What did he say, Aquarius? She said, exactly. Girl, I forgot. What was that song he said? Y'all help me with that quote. Did he do a song back in the day? Tell my some they, the people that start claiming that they the one that made him. He said, you said that you made hold. Make another one then. Make another one. Oh, somebody said that was the lost ones. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Shoot. Talking about you to make. Ninja, go make another. Make you. How come you ain't made you? How you gonna claim you make, make you? Make you. Don't even make another one. Make you. <laughs> Can you make you? We got world shaking stuff to do. We're not going to sit here and say, you all right? We all got them processes to go. You just not ready for this yet. It's okay. Just get out the way. Try, quit trying to put a, 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 a flatten my tires and stuff. Get, get, get out the way. I'm on the highway driving real fast. Anybody's tripping that you got something to go through? You just got a hell of a nerve to think that everything's supposed to stop because you got some issues. That's the problem. Instead of being honest with yourself, I'm just not ready yet. I'm not there yet. Shoot. You may hold, make another one. Before you make another one, make you. Make you. Funny looking self. Thumbs up, thumbs up, share, share, share. Now, how did I get off of that? Vicky, get back to the article. <laughs> I read the first few sentences and got way out. Y'all know how I do. Now, watch this. We're talking again, uh, family, about this piece. The Biden-Harris campaign hires director of black media to better uh, reach black voters. 
Now, this is a new black media campaign. Jasmine Harris. Now, watch this. Let me skip. Now, I was reading you the absolute laughable and libelous part of this piece from the um, principal deputy campaign manager, Quentin Fultz. Quentin Fultz had the nerve to say, quote, our campaign is going to win 2024 by mobilizing the diverse Biden-Harris coalition that sent Joe Biden and Kamala Harris to the White House in 2020. And black voters are a critical part of winning the coalition. That ain't the only part. What else he say? Watch this. Y'all think, I don't want, look, screenshot this so you don't think I'm making this lie up. Screenshot this part that I'm going to read again. What does this part say? Y'all hit that thumbs up button. Please and thank you. Watch this. While President Biden and Vice President Harris have been fighting for black Americans every day in office, somebody say the real devil is a lie. God, today, they, the deputy manager tell me they've been fighting for us every day. Every day, every day. Ninja, y'all been fighting against us. Y'all been fighting us every day. While President Biden and Vice President Harris have been fighting for Black Americans every day in office, our campaign has already made the earliest, largest investment in Black media. I haven't gotten a dime. If they're not investing in the streets, in the everyday people like ourselves, who have been making major impact with the actual people over years and years and years, don't take my word, listen to the people on the streets. Then you can't make that claim, liars. That's the problem with black folk. Some of us, you despise the younger generation or the generation of folks that come behind you or alternative black media. You despise us because we're not in lockstep with massa. And we're not tethered to the oppressive establishment. Exactly. Watch this. Goes on to say the largest, we made the largest investment in black media for a re-election campaign starting in August of last year and organizing on the ground in key communities. No, you ain't not on the ground for real, for real on the ground. You still trying to hit up the uh, James Clyburn voters. You giving us the middle finger ceiling. You're not dealing with the streets for real. Don't forget, it was the Democrats like the Black Chicagoans. Remember, the Black Chicagoans have been shutting down Chicago and totally cramping the style of the Black political class and the Black uh, uh, elite class there because they have been coming out against the migrant invasion. They've been suing the city. They're responsible for helping to shut down a couple of the locations where they was trying to hire, uh, uh, house them. They've been calling out the mayor. They've been showing up to all the political meetings. It was the Democrats there that said, you ninjas are too, too powerful. You making too much noise. We got to change the rules for you to even attend the meetings. It was the Democrats in Chicago that said, in order for black folks to come to these meetings now, which was mostly black folks, but Chicago is period. Y'all got to show government ID. And then you got to register in advance so we can scrutinize you before you get here. And then we're going to make the first floor of, of where these uh, meetings are typically held. We're going to restrict some of those areas so that y'all got to go in the overflow room on some other level. So you don't be so powerful. Make us be so disruptive. They had to stop that policy because one of the um, organizations that basically, you know, it's a government watch group. That's what I called it. Is the one that called out the mayor, Brandon Johnson, and told him that those rules are likely illegal. So they end up having to pull back on that. But don't forget, that was your Democrats that told you that the Republicans are racist because they told you you need an ID to vote. But they told you, Ninja, you got to have an ID to even come up in these meetings. 
They're mad at us. And the moment you start to talk about such issues, they'll call you, um, they, they'll tell you that you sound like Trump or that you are spewing MAGA talking points. And while they're giving millions and billions of dollars to everybody but us, they tell you why it's impossible for you to get it. In fact, I was invited to a handpicked group. How many of you all saw some of my images I put up the other day where I met directly with um, Robert F. Kennedy? I should probably leave that for a different broadcast. I put up a couple of the pictures on my Instagram. By the way, you can follow me on Instagram, family, at Vicky X Dillard. This is real life. This is real life. This is real life. That was a meeting I was attending. Real life, real life, Vicky, real life. And without me getting into details, I was the only one allowed to address him. After I addressed him for those few minutes, just let's just say this, I, the people were shaking. <laughs> and the other, because it was a small, intimate hand group of us that was invited. They didn't even let the other people talk family after me. And y'all know I was all about the tangibles. And the history, as I mentioned to him, I want to talk about the Holocaust. And when I said the Black Holocaust, God, the day they went crazy. And then I started talking about them folks who was also a part of the Black Holocaust and how our reparations is a debt. And I said a couple, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more things. And <laughs> real respectful in a short amount of time. In the tectonic place. And that Denver Black Historic Culture Center start to ship shape. And the manager, his, his people start, you know, and then the, they cut, they, they, they shut, he they, they wouldn't take more questions. That just that's all in the books. Lord have mercy. Talk black to me, somebody. It's real life. Real, real life, real receipts. This is this your girl. He shook my hand. Yes, he did. And I sat right before him and had my conversation. And he looked at me like a deer in the headlights. He didn't know what to do. It was my energy, baby. It was my energy. And it was my spirit team that showed out. I give credit to where credit is due. Y'all hit that thumbs up button, please. It was something else. That's all I'm going to say. God today, God today, God today. It, it was something else. Respectful. But you, I mean, what do you do with power? What, what can you do? What can you do? <laughs> about Israel because y'all know he all for the genocide and so he, he, once they did a little opening remarks and stuff and oh, Vicky Dillard and could you come on could you come on up and sit right here and here's the and then when I came in and said I, I would like to talk about the Holocaust and then when I said the black child heaven and earth <laughs> saying some more stuff too it was respectful but it was powerful and did nobody else get to say nothing but Vicky Bouvon. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> I feel bad for my people because I wanted to hear what that rest of them had to say. I was just as shocked as the rest of them. I was. I'm just as shocked. I was still like, but they're not going to let the people, they're not going to let the, the, the other, the people that sit in there, they ain't going to let the people. Child. Hell to the no, no, no. Y'all, he was. <laughs> <laughs> Don't play with us. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Vicky, where were you at in this, this thing? What was I saying? Let me get back to this article. Y'all play too much. Y'all threw me for a loop. Y'all threw me. Watch this. See, I done went and showed you the pictures because, you know, you got to show receipts around this piece. I put it on the community page on YouTube. Um, it's on Instagram. It's on a couple of other little platforms, just the pictures and stuff. Watch this. Back to this black media person. There's no one better equipped, it says. Um, what did I say? Oh, I, he lied. Remember I said the, 
the uh, deputy campaign man, principal deputy campaign manager Quentin Fultz had the nerve to say that they fight, quote, President Biden and Vice President Harris have been fighting for black Americans every day. That's what they said every day. Lord, Vicky, please move on. Then he said, folks said of Jasmine Harris. Remember, Jasmine Harris is the new Biden Harris campaign media director, black media director. Right. It says there's he says, quote, there's no one better equipped to continue to build on the work and communicate. Y'all listen. And communicate the stakes of this election directly to black voters across the country. He continued. Jasmine is immensely seasoned and talented operative who will hit the ground running and we are thrilled to have her join our team. So family, I'm asking you, what you going to do with this information now that I'm giving you the name and the receipts of this woman? What are you going to do to get involved to ask them, has she reached out to us? The hell you going to call yourself Black Media Director and we ain't even heard from you. Watch this. He continued. Well, no, this is the next part. Jasmine, who left her role as director of African-American media for Senate Majority Leader Schumer to take her new position, told the Grio she's, quote, extremely grateful to work on the Biden-Harris campaign team, which she described as dedicated to ensuring our country keeps the strong and trustworthy leaders it needs in President Biden and Vice President Harris as we continue to fight for progress. Watch what she says here. Black reporters and outlets, listen, she says black reporters and outlets must always have a seat at the table as it relates to our nation's political leadership, she said, especially when the stakes are as high as they are in this election. Now, they haven't reached out to us yet. Wonder if they will. Remember, Tiffany Cross, who's got that new podcast with Angela Rye. And oh, what's the the bussy bussy governor candidate name? What's his name? Yeah, what's the man name who ran ran for governor in Florida? He got that new podcast with them now. <laughs> help me, somebody! Somebody, please help me, Andrew Giller. Y'all play too much. Thank you, precious. So Andrew Gillum, Angela Rye. And Tiffany Cross, all of these are different types of rejects. Rejects from uh Democrat uh, party. And they made, they, they then they set up uh, Andrew Gillum real good. He was in there doing bussy behavior with two white boys, smoking whatever narcotic they was in there doing. And the pictures, how they have pictures of all that? Why he trying to run for governor? They, they, they messed you up with your black wife at home. But okay, I mean, that's you. We didn't know, we just didn't know you was like in off into all that. That's all. We know sometimes relationships don't work out, but we just didn't know. We just didn't know. We just didn't know. But anyway, then y'all know Angela Rye used to be on CNN for a long time. They didn't re apparently didn't renew her contract and stuff. And now she talking about some kind of sexual harassment or text or something she got from Cuomo while she was there. Now she come out the closet with all that information now, she says. So I was just like, oh, okay. Then Tiffany Cross, she got fired from MSNBC. They didn't renew her contract either. She was kicking and screaming, talking about she was getting her lawyer and all that. Child, they still didn't bring her back. And then they used a new black president of MSNBC to let her go. So she couldn't put it on nobody white. Now she started, Tiffany Cross, before they fired her from a little weekend show. She started bringing Rolling on the past couple of weeks. But she should have known what her destiny was after that. So she decided to use one of her last broadcasts, one of them, to tell the whole world not to listen to folks like us. And specifically, one of the names she called out was Tariq Nasheed. She specifically, literally told the audience, don't listen to us. But these black rejects want you to cry a river for them while they were on those white platforms telling the world, don't listen to us, disrespecting us or mocking us or trying to diminish us. Don't y'all find that? Interesting. Somebody said, I forgot about Angela. All of us forgot about all of them. Charlemagne is the one that came up with this podcast to try to refurbish them. And put them out there. Watch this. These Democrat shields. 
Now, when you listen to that little podcast, the little clip or two that you can stand and listen to, because I can't do full-fledged, full broadcast. I just can't do the whole podcast with them. I got to hear a clip of their on accident. When you listen to it on accident, the clips, you will see they still trying to push the Democrat Party platform. They trying to act like they're the rebellious kind. But that's that control opposition stuff. Trying to look like they're against the establishment. But then at the same time telling you or intimating that we should still be with the Democrat Party. This is so crazy. And it's why y'all don't have no credibility. Now I bet you a whole lot of money that Jasmine has or plans on reaching out to them. Hell, who knows? They might be helping to fund their podcast. Watch this. She says, black reporters and outlets must always have a seat at the table as it relates to our nation's political leadership, especially when the stakes are as high as they are in this election. You need to listen to that, family. She said, black reporters and outlets must always have a seat at the table. They never come for us to have a seat at the table. They despise us because we are asking, for, we are demanding actual tangible things that would change the condition of black folks. We are the ones that upset legacy media, establishment, government, and systems. Talk black to me, somebody. This one lady, you know, she's 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 kind of famous. She's been going back and forth with me today. On Instagram, she goes by Badass Boss. She's a big, well-known marketing genius or something. And all the top people that know her and all this stuff that she got going, she was upset with me because I had been covering Ghana. I've been covering Uganda. I've been cover covering several of the African countries uh, for a long time. Uh, and discussing the fact that the United States has been imposing on those African countries, I beg your pardon. Threatening them with economic sanctions if they uh, passed what America considers to be anti-LGBTQ laws. Now, I've done extensive coverage on it, multiple broadcasts, particularly on African Diaspora News Network um, that I'm on. So she and I were going back and forth and she, one of her comments to me was, well, for you to be a journalist, because I basically was saying how, you know, America, we need to mind our own business and stop trying to impose social imperialism on Ghana in particular, because Ghana is the one that's in the news now. Before that, I was discussing Uganda, where President Museveni pushed back very effectively against the United States, even though they kicked them off of uh, uh, a program that's known as AGOA. AGOA is the African uh, Growth and Opportunity Act, which many African countries are part of, which basically allows them to trade with the United States and other uh, uh, with the US in particular, uh, with little to no tariffs attached to it. Uh, this AGOA has been going on for some years now, so that's one of several organizations and entities that they use to impose economic sanctions on African countries if they don't push the, the uh, LGBTQ agenda. So when I was talking, when, when so she said to me in one of her responses, she says, well, for you to be a journalist, you're so, uh, 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 what did she say, limited. So your, your view is so uh, narrow. I told her, I said, ma'am, I'm, 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 I'm more than a journalist. But notwithstanding, you know, I'm happy to go further with you in this conversation so that I can give you more truth and context to this. And in fact, this particular woman, I think she's some kind of an ambassador to Ghana. And she actually has African blood. I think Ghanaian blood. I don't don't quote me on it. But I think it's her mother is 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 an immigrant or something. So when she's saying that, then she's just doing all this advocating for LGBTQ and talking about, uh, uh, when I told her I, don't, I wouldn't mind talking to her, she told me she wasn't sure she would be coming on my platform because she said, you you said something about the fact that you see yourself as more than a journalist, but you don't see them as more than LGBTQ. I said, ma'am, that only made no sense what you said. 
Ma'am, that don't make no sense what you said. I told her and she wanted to explain to me how uh, Ghana and some of the African countries have had uh, LGBT folks in their country and all this stuff. I said, ma'am, some of the Ghanaian parliamentarians acknowledged that they had certain LGBTQ customs that weren't breached. The question is, why are these different African countries codifying LGBTQ law now? I said the impetus or the reason for which they're doing this is the Western agenda that you ought to be worried about. Furthermore, I told her, I said the uh, Saudi Arabia and Qatar are some of America's top trading partners. Yes. Saudi Arabia and Qatar's LGBTQ laws will unalive you if you engage in that behavior. Do y'all know that? But America is still doing business with them. America is not in Saudi Arabia's face and telling Saudi Arabia, we finna shut you down economically if you don't pass pro-LGBTQ laws. Something in particular happened in Ghana that made them decide to do that, where it was mess making in the, from the West. That's why silly, talk black to me, somebody they was trying to, uh, Andrew Gillum. <laughs> They was doing some Gillum action. For the most part, they didn't bother them folks if they were, uh, as some of the countries said, some of the countries said they don't want the agenda on their children, you know, about not promoting it. And the overwhelming number of the parliamentarians and MPs in Ghana passed the law. Now they're just waiting on President Akufu uh, to sign it. Now he's claiming that there is some kind of a, a, a uh, somebody's raised an issue with it, so now it's got to go to the Supreme Court before he signs it. And I told him, ma'am, I'm not desperate to talk. I'm just trying to enlighten you and give you context. See, you all can't explain to me how the hell we buddy-buddy with Saudi Arabia and Qatar and their law says that we will unalive you if you engage in that behavior. But you over there in Africa threatening multiple African countries because it's an agenda, silly. That's the part you don't want to talk about. And I would be hard pressed to see any of you all sitting out there talking about why is it the United States? I don't see none of them objecting to why the U.S. is still buddy-buddy and have high, uh, high trade with Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Even though some of their laws will take you out, you will, get, you will have an obituary. Make it make sense. You don't have to disrespect somebody who's engaged in that lifestyle. It has nothing to do with that. My point. But I only brought that up, y'all, because she want to talk about, well, you a journalist. Ma'am, I'm more than a journalist. Talk black to me. Back to this black media stuff. Don't tell me my position is narrow because I don't agree with you. See, that's what's wrong with you ninjas out there. Watch this. Watch this. While working for Schumer's office, she advocated for black reporters, as I mentioned, national black media outlets have access to Capitol Hill. Well, actually, I didn't read that part. I didn't hear from her. It says that she advocated for black reporters and net black and national black media outlets to have access to Capitol Hill. Did she contact us? When them folks was doing back-to-back -back hearings, talking about anti-Semitism is on the rise in these colleges, and they was doing all these hypothetical scenarios, there was no overwhelming evidence of that. They was taking their they, they, they information from the ADL, who's known as the liars. That's what ADL stands for. But when you have real anti-blackness, and as I mentioned before, the former Israeli consul who said that black American youth is a threat to Israel, none of y'all held no hearings. 
your top Middle Eastern ally says in a private meeting, they captured you on video privately, secretly, saying that the problem with Israel is a black American youth. The hell? Ma'am, she could have, uh, my point is, Miss, since you worked at the Hill, and I've discussed this at length years ago and fairly recent, months ago, I've discussed, I'm going to keep talking about issues that I believe are relevant. I didn't hear from this woman. And you know y'all copy us. Stop playing. It says she often briefed Schumer and members of the Senate Democrat Caucus on her discussions with these reporters. She also served as liaison between the majority leader's office and digital staffers within the caucus. Man, we ain't never heard of this woman. And that's by design is what I'm trying to show y'all. It says that before she started working on the Hill, Jasmine Harris was a digital media director of the Democratic Caucus of the Michigan House of Representatives, where she spearheaded its digital communications and social media presence. Let me ask you a question. If this Miss Jasmine, which I'm not, I don't know her. If she was responsible specifically in the Michigan House of Representatives, where she spearheaded the digital communications and social media presence, did she turn around and, and works for Chuck Schumer, who is a very well-known, long-serving Democrat New York senator and worked in black media? You cannot tell me you was running black media, social media in particular, and she don't know who we are? Now, I haven't talked to Brother Tariq, I haven't talked to Professor Black Truth or Jason none of them. I would be curious to know have they reached out to them and others. I'm just throwing those names out because I haven't heard nothing. I don't know. I haven't talked to my brother Phil Scott yet, but I don't know. I wonder, has he heard from her? We are the main social media in particular spaces. So if you ain't talked to none of those names and many others like us, ma'am, y'all playing. You a fraud. Joel Payne, Democratic strategist who served as director of African-American paid media for Hillary Clinton's 2016 presidential campaign, said the Biden-Harris campaign's hiring of a director, y'all listen, of black media demonstrates the party's commitment to black communities. Hell to the no, no, no. If we ain't heard from you, if you're not pushing what we said and all the streets are saying, it doesn't prove that. It's proven that you're trying to save face. Say it for the people in the back, Miss Sharice. Say it for the people in the back, Miss Sharice. Did y'all hear what I, uh, I might said? BGM, Black Grassroots, is the only black media. I be hearing from people that for real, for, for real, is in, in the, know what's going on with the Chicago political, political class. And they tell me that the people that's out there in the streets that's pushing this, know Vicky Dillard. That's what I'm told. And some more stuff. But I'm going to leave it for there for now. In other words, they're being influenced inspired and, and empowered by us. Anybody out there crediting former Don Eliminate of CNN? Don Eliminate of CNN? Who's fired too? Nobody's out there saying joy and inspired me to go vote. And talking about reparations and getting justice. Nobody is talking about y'all. And I'm talking about for things that matter. Thank you, Miss Sharice. She repeated it too. <laughs> That's my sister. 
The types of investments in experienced staff that correspond directly to core constituencies show that the president and his team understand what it will take to keep their coalition together for 2024. So I just gave y'all some names. Y'all need to be contacting Joel Payne, P-A-Y-N-E. You all should be contacting Miss Jasmine Harris, J-A-S-M-I-N-E, the new black media director. You all should be contacting the principal Deputy Campaign Director, Quentin Fultz, F-U-L-I-K-S, and saying y'all talking about money and resources for black media and contacting black media. And then you name off who you listen to and ask them to give you the receipts on whether or not they reached out to us, especially after our unmatched impact with the streets over the years. When I say streets, I'm talking about the everyday average black person. Y'all hit that thumbs up button, share, share, share. I'm almost finished. Now listen to this part, y'all. This part, this is what tripped me out. All of it tripped me out, but listen to this. It's encouraging to see the campaign investing early in organizing and engaging Black voters. This type of hire is good news for those in the Democrat Party who have been eager to see the campaign take greater shape and direction, Payne said. The campaign is not naive to the fact that polling shows black voters are not particularly enthusiastic about supporting a second term of the Biden-Harris administration. That's got to do with us. Campaign officials and Democratic strategists continue to argue that any dismal polling would dissipate as Election Day draws nearer and Biden and Harris begin hitting the road to remind and inform black voters that they have done what they have done to better their communities. Ninja. Jasmine Harrison, chairman of the Democratic National Committee. Jamie Harrison, excuse me. About, about Jasmine. But anyway, Jamie Harrison with his funny looking stuff. Y'all remember that broadcast I did where he was running from them sisters who was confronting him about reparations. When them black women was asking him questions, he literally, not figuratively, he literally fled the meeting how many of y'all saw me do that broadcast some months ago? I did it on a few platforms. When he was talking to black folks in one of them colleges, they started talking to him about tangibles for black folks. He literally got up and left. And started getting sassy. Now, remember, I just told you the part where, they, uh, uh, where it says that campaign officials and Democratic strategists continue to argue that any dismal polling is going to dissipate for black voters, right? Jamie Harrison, a chairman of the Democratic National Committee, told the Grio that Biden has, quote, done so much for black communities. These folks are delusional, including issuing billions in student debt relief, stimulus funding to re-jump the black economy during the pandemic. Stimulus funding that then turned around and prosecuted half the black people that got the funding. Stimulus funding that everybody else got funding for too. You wouldn't have need stimulus funding if the Democrats didn't jack up the economy and impose the mandates. It was the Democrats that told you if you didn't get these shots, you was going to lose your job. It was the authoritarian Democrats, repeat after me, authoritarian Democrats, say it again, the authoritarian Democrats who told you that you are responsible for other people getting sick and actually dying because you didn't get the shots. It was them that are responsible for some of you losing your jobs because you didn't get it. It was them that's responsible for folks that lost their homes and cars. That was the Democrats. It was them that silenced our voices and shut us down online. The Democrats, because we weren't pushing the shots. And when we start waking up, smelling the begonias, realizing y'all was playing us, 
And we started talking about possible alternative ways to look at this. You guys called us conspiracy theorists. You called us liars. You mocked us. You attacked us. You wrote about me. You demonetized us and you shut down and pulled down many of our broadcasts. That was the Democrats. And now when y'all go downtown, how many of y'all, some of y'all's downtown areas look like a ghost town? Y'all notice some of them playing that. Jamie Harrison said, we've done so much for black communities. He also talking about rejump the black economy during the pandemic. He took my criminal justice reform through executive action and historic appointments of black judges on the federal bench. Ninja, you Democrats rerouted $50 million to the Asian community during the pandemic in one year's time when the Asian community was, was, was claiming that they was experiencing racism. And then y'all passed an anti-Asian hate crime bill. Black folks who created America, who invented America, were still waiting on technically a black hate bill that you and the Republicans overwhelmingly passed for the Asians in one year's time. And with no need for Congress, y'all redirected $50 million that was already in the government to their communities. They made black folks the face of that stop Asian hate campaign that we told you was a finesse. That's so they could get both Republicans and Democrats on board. And it worked. And because the Asian community, as I told y'all before, some of their businesses was losing so much money during the pandemic. They came up with this campaign in lockstep with their legislators. And the legislators told them, this is what we're going to do at the top. If y'all start making noise at the bottom, so start this campaign. So this is what's going to justify us getting involved. Because the pandemic was destroying their businesses. That's disproportionately funded by black folks. Y'all haven't heard nothing about no stop Asian hate since. Tell the truth. Jamie Harrison says it's important for us to make sure that people understand that he gets credit for the hard work he's put into really giving us all a seat at the table. You can smell it reading. You can smell him just reading that quote. You can smell that boot lick. You can smell that bone and biscuit. Through the phone, the digital article. So I've given y'all some names. If you're just coming in, watch the whole broadcast. Now I'm going to ask you, what are y'all going to do about this? What are y'all going to do about this lie that they're actually making a difference and reaching the real black media? I find this fascinating. We got a few months. I'm going to see if I hear something. I got to run, family. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Family, be sure to get your Spring Venus Luxury Magazine. Again, this is the cover. Again, I'm still taking pre-sales this week because we're going to get them printed and shipped off. Go now to vickiplanet.com. The link is in the chat. Also, family, don't forget to join my absolutely amazing spiritual mastermind school. It is so yummy. I asked you all to give me 12 months. I started from, I started Vicky to the mystery school course. I had many spiritual schools, but we've started this new mastermind school, only $45 a month. You can't beat that with a stick. We know in no limit of time, of course, quantum physicists and other scientists have proven what our mystics and philosophers have known for centuries, actually for millennia, that everything you see came from everything you can't see. Everything you see came from everything you can't see. I break down important principles every single month about the unseen. Why is it important? Because if everything you see came from everything you can't see, if you're spending time understanding and perfecting the unseen, that means that you're going to have what? Greater manifestations or the part of your life that you can see. And this is going to affect every area of your life. If you're expecting to receive unfair advantage in every area of your life, I'm talking about for people that's really about their life for transformation to give me 12 months 
Of course, you're going to be seeing results way before that. But 12 intense months of implementing the information, the knowledge and the rituals that I give you every single month in the beginning of the mystery school. We got a whole community. You're going to have access to um, some of your fellow students um, in a whole community. We have our own social media platform, basically, at the beginning of the mystery school. So once you sign up, you get automatic access to that. Some of my students are in the chat. Some of my students have gotten some of the steepest discounts on other products and services because they're a part of the Big Dealer Mystery School for $45 a month. Your life will never be the same. All you need to do is go to my website, the same link where you order uh, the magazine. Uh, you can just uh, look on the website, the front page for the Big Dealer Mystery School. Join. I'm telling you, you're going to thank me later because every area of your life is going to be blessed. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Be sure to share this broadcast. I'm your sister with the curly braids. I bow to you. You are my bliss. I can't wait to see you again.